Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Rico L, your host from a new and exciting show called Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal. This is a show where all the gloves are off. There's no situation that we can't handle. There's no subject that's out of context for us. We are here to give you the real deal. We also have a shout out for our independent filmmakers. If you want to show short films, we have the ability to accommodate you. We have one of the greatest theaters that it is in the city of Detroit. It's called the Senate Theater. It's on Michigan Avenue, and it is a beautiful theater that encompasses a lot of history. If you need additional information about Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal, I want you to go to this particular website. It's called dragonpicture.net. And you can also receive information from Tom4K4 at yahoo.com and Rico L at yahoo.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. First step rehab, the number one choice for your rehabilitation needs. We have state-of-the-art equipment for injuries due to auto accidents, spinal care, sports injuries, workman comp. First Step Rehab's physical therapy program is tailored for each patient and includes strengthening and pain relief, patient education, and a carefully monitored exercise program. First Step Rehab, the best choice for your rehabilitation needs. Located at 7455 Greenfield, 313-406-9597. My name is John T., ex-CIA agent. I retired several years ago, and I made a promise to the government to put my past behind me. Now I've been forced out of retirement to seek out the people that killed my son. Big mistake. I promise you, I will find them and I will be the worst nightmare that they've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal. And I have with me right now, Mr. Phil Iwata. Hey, Phil. Great question. How you doing, man? Great. Good to see you, buddy. For all of you, I just want to let you know that Phil Iwata is a man of many talents. <laughs> Thank you. I want him to share these things with you, but just to give you a little feedback on Phil, Phil is a martial artist has been in martial arts for a very long time, uh, 30 years. You get up my age, right? <laughs> <laughs> Phil looks good for his age, doesn't he? Thank you. I appreciate that. Phil uh, has a gym in the Detroit area. It's called the Detroit Boxing Jungle. Uh, Phil has a bike shop. Phil has a video store. Phil is a major contributor to a lot of different organizations here in the city of Detroit. Uh, I don't want to toot too much of his horn because I know that Phil is a type of guy. He's a very humble man, but he's a very giving man. But also at the same time, I've got to tell you this. Phil is in a film that's oh. called The Act of Vengeance. Phil, 
Yes. <laughs> Got a question for you. Bro. Anything, anything for you, Rick. What was the person and the role that you played in Activate? Oh, Brother Rick. The role I play is uh, Johnny Vito. Hmm. And he's a character, possibly you can uh, relate to him like a Scarface character <laughs> in the city of Detroit. Okay. Okay. Written, produced, and also directed and stars Tom Henry. Wow. Yeah. But the character I play is a uh, character that's a vicious, self centered mm. man that is wants to possess everything around him. Okay, and he's thought a lesson by the star, of course, who is Tom Henry. Okay. Now I have a question for you. Now, normally I know that your character mm -hmm. is a lot different from that. I know you're more of a calm person, more of a, a humble person. How did you get yourself ready for that role? You know, I had some background in theater. I graduated from University of Detroit in okay. 1981. You're at telling Bachelor me you're of Arts. Your age. <laughs> <laughs> That's college, of course. Uh, yes, I did some uh, plays back in there. And like I said, I graduated with a BA in theater and uh, communication studies. So I did wow. have a little background, and uh, wow. the character I play is definitely not me. Okay. Um, you know, I heard that when you were in character, it was just something to behold. They said that there was a fight scene that you were doing, that the guy was trying to hit you, and it was like the Matrix, when you got out of the way and you came back and you kind of knock this guy out. Tell me about that. Oh man, that was great. You know, Tom is uh, very talented and uh, he can make things happen. He can make you fly. Okay. <laughs> Tom is a very good director and editor as well. But uh, as far as the character that I played, had a little martial arts background, yes, I had to teach that guy a lesson. Okay. But you know, I've had martial arts background <laughs> like you said. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to mess with him. No, uh, Rick, not as big I, as you are, brother. <laughs> I've heard some stories about this man, so I wouldn't want to mess with him. Well, thank you. Got a question. Are you going to pursue any more acting? You know, it was always there. I probably will. And uh, I want to see what Tom's got in line. He's promised a few other things. And possibly, yes. Okay. Yes, in the city of Detroit, it's growing. And if they can get more motion pictures here, and I, I would definitely like to. Yes, I would. I know that you promote and do boxing shows, MMA matches, and things like that. Do you have any shows that are going to be coming on in the future? Definitely. We're doing uh, monthly shows at the Detroit Boxing Jungle, and we do our annually at the Dearborn Civic Center, and that's coming up in May, I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, you hear that. Dearborn Civic Center in May, Detroit Boxing Jungle, the Awada Promotions. Remember that. Okay, Phil. The Detroit Boxing Jungle, how long have you been involved with that? It originally was called Dearborn Sports and Boxing. Okay. And uh, we managed and promoted uh, different various uh, fighters, whether it be mixed martial arts, boxers, and that sort. And uh, that's been in existence since 1992. And then we moved to Detroit in uh, 1995. Okay. And that's how long it's been. Okay. And... and what is the physical address of the Detroit Boxing Jungle? 7455 Greenfield in the heart of Detroit. Okay, Real folks. Real safe area. 7455 Greenfield, right in the heart of Detroit. If I'm not mistaken, that would possibly be between Tyreman and Warren. Correct. Correct. And where is the bike slash video shop? That's actually it's directly across the street from that. So. Uh, and the address for that? It's seven four, five zero Greenfield. Okay, seven four. So wait a minute. So you can go to seven four five zero Greenfield. You can get games. You can get bikes. You can get TVs. You can get all different type of accessories there. And then you can come across the street. And have a good workout. And have a great <laughs> workout. But wait a minute. I heard something that you also have a rehab center. So what is that about? Yes, uh, directly uh, next door to the uh, boxing jungle, we open up a physical therapy. Okay. Okay. Those who are uh, getting accidents or those that need therapy can go right directly next door to that. Fantastic. Think about that, folks. 
<laughs> think, think about what Phil had. One time deal. <laughs> you, are you, everything is right there centrally, I mean very centrally located so that the Awadas can definitely take care of you. Well, man, I'm going to tell you, I appreciate you taking the time to come out on Detroit Uncut, the real deal. Anytime, Rick. You're pleasant to have around. The whole crew is. But we did also, Detroit Boxing Jungle, wanted to bring you and present you with a plaque. Oh, man. I okay. appreciate that. That's from Detroit Boxing Jungle. Oh, wow. That's directly to you, brother. I appreciate it, Phil. Okay, and Thank please, you, people out there, people that know me, I want you to come and support Tom Henry's film, An Act of Vengeance. Thank you. I appreciate this. Folks, remember, we definitely have the upcoming movie, Act of Vengeance, a Tom Henry original. And I just want to ensure that everybody, everybody continues to watch Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal, where we're going to bring everything real to the table. And again, we appreciate my man here, Phil Iwata. I appreciate Phil. it. Please support us. All right, brother. We'll be right back. My name is Tommy Henry. I'm a director, producer, writer, action scene choreographer. Um, my latest project is an uh, action film, an independent action film, uh, that's called Act of Vengeance. This film is about an undercover cop that goes undercover uh, to try to bust his organization. And in the end, the organization finds out that he's an undercover cop and they have him killed. Well, then his father steps in to finish the job that his son had started and also to take down the people that killed his son. So it's a lot of action in this film and I really like this film a lot because I, I, I think one of the things that I really like the most is that I really got some very exciting actors uh, to be in this film. Hi, my name is Phil Iwata. I play the character Johnny Vito in the upcoming film Act of Vengeance. Produced directed and wrote by Tom Henry. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Tom for giving the local talent and myself an opportunity to be in this film. My name is uh, David Fidua, and I am Detective Cole in this awesome movie called Acts of Vengeance. And I am extremely happy to be in this movie. This is my second movie with Mr. Tom Henry, who is an amazing director. Uh, he directed me in Uncut, and I was also a police officer in there as well. And he liked my, my work so well there that he decided to put me in this movie as well. So. Hi, I'm Marion Kirby. I am Detective Smith in Act of Vengeance, and this is my second film with Tom Henry. The first one was Uncut. I was also a, a cop in that as well. My name is Rick Elliott, and I play the number two hitman for Johnny Vito and of course the film Act of Vengeance. Uh, at this particular time, I had never had any acting experience except for when Mr. Henry came to me and he approached me uh, dealing with my demeanor and I was working out one day. And he said, I have just a part for you, Rick. He said, I want you to play a hitman. You really won't say too much, but you'll execute things on the level as far as destruction. You'll break people's necks, you'll kill people, you'll do all those types of things and you'll have fun doing it. My name is Larry Kendrick. Uh, my character name is Becker in Act of Vengeance. I play the hitman for Vito. Um, this is my first acting job, and uh, thanks to Tom and Henry for, give, uh, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this movie. Uh, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I've learned a lot, you know, from acting to uh, using a different uh, equipment. Um, you know, come out and uh, support the movie. It's a great movie, and, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Please take anyone that you can think of and everyone that you can think of and get a hold of to come see this movie. First Step Rehab, the number one choice for your rehabilitation needs. We have state-of-the-art equipment for injuries due to auto accidents, spinal care, sports injuries, workman comp. First Step Rehab's physical therapy program is tailored for each patient and includes strengthening and pain relief, patient education, and a carefully monitored exercise program. First Step Rehab, 
the best choice for your rehabilitation needs. Located at 7455 Greenfield, 313-406-9597. I know when John thinks about the law, the killing's not gonna stop until he finds out who killed his son. So maybe you can tell me why there's dead bodies popping up everywhere since he's been back. You know, detective, instead of you standing here, Asking me questions? You should be out there trying to catch this killer. You know I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to take out the guys who killed my son. We don't need you acting like a one-man vigilante squad. You got a problem with that. You need to let me know now. I want this man taken care of. Do you want to take it out slow or fast? My sources tell me the dead guy is about as dangerous as they can get. What? Come on, Johnny B. You know, I'm gonna enjoy killing you like I did your son. We are back. Now, I have a man here that I guarantee you that the ladies are going to shiver in their seats. <laughs> this is my main man. He's an actor. He's an entrepreneur. He's just an all-around good brother. My man, Appreciate I give that. to you. Appreciate that, sir. Thank you. This is well, Troy sir. Smalley. Oh, What's brother, up, brother, brother. You all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, Rick, for that just amazing, amazing introduction. I really appreciate that, sir. Hey, ladies. Y'all hear that, right? Y'all hear that brother's voice? I bet you if it's a, it's a late night <laughs> and it's a good setting, I bet you want well, that voice to I, soothe you, don't you? Like I said, I appreciate that, but hey, I, I got to give it to where it's, this is a borrowed instrument. From God, so I, I, I just say, you know, thank you, God, and um, I'm glad that uh, everybody appreciates it. So thank you very much. Hey, man, it's a blessing. That's right. God is good, and we feel you on that. Yeah. You know. Amen. Amen. Hey, Troy, I've yes, been hearing sir. some good things about you, brother. Well, appreciate that. Hey, I heard that you've been doing this film, Act of Vengeance. Yes, sir. I've heard you on the cast of Be Wick and Mac. Yes, sir. I heard that people want to give you all these accolades. They want to throw things at your feet, brother, because well, of that awesome golden voice well, that you have. Well, again, it all goes back to God. It's full circle. It's a full circle thing. It just, you know, That's it's right. God showing out through me. He's using me as an instrument, you know, and um, like I said, I'm just appreciative of all the love that everybody has given to me, but I got to give it back to where it belongs. Oh, I feel you on that, brother. Hey, let me ask you this. Now, I know that you played an awesome role in Act of Vengeance. They yes. told me that you was this devastating cop, man. <laughs> give me some insight on that, brother. Well, first of all, I got to give credit where credit is due with that. Um, Mr. Tom Henry, the brilliant independent film director that he is, um, he called me up out of the blue through God. 
And basically, he found me out, you know, through this movie called Detroit Hoops and said, I have a character for you that I want you to play. And uh, he sent me the script. I read it. I love the character. And um, the character basically speaks for himself. He's a special agent. Special mm -hmm. Agent McCain actually is his name. And basically, he's called on to help out on a murder investigation involving okay. Tom's character, um, which is John T., the murder of his son. Okay. Now, the kind of brother that I know you are, the kind of smooth, the kind of brother that's laid back. Now, I know you had to be assertive and aggressive in this role. How did you get ready for that? How did you accomplish that? Well, basically, um, I've played uh, cop roles before in, mm -hmm. in different venues, such as Detroit 187. Did you say Detroit 187? Detroit 187. Sir. Hey, folks, I'm quite sure you remember that, Detroit 187. Yes, My sir. man, Troy Small. What else, Troy? Yes, sir. And basically, too, um, i got to say that just learning through uh, different cop shows that I grew up watching back in the day, like a Black Columbo, basically, Okay. Um, you know, even though the original Columbo was white, but you know, I basically took on the fact that he wasn't always physical, he was more mental, he was more a psychological cat, always trying to figure things out and everything. So, you don't have to beat down people physically all the time. If you can break them down, you know, psychologically and everything, you know, then that's putting them in their place in an intellectual way. Okay, I feel you on that. So, that role right there, you, you became the black Columbo, huh? You was the pretty black much. superhero cop, right? Pretty much, pretty much. I feel you on that. That's so, it. how did you enjoy playing the role, man? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, you know, just knowing, being on the set around all the other great actors that were on there and everything, and, and the great directing through Tom, and uh, just all the, the different scenarios that he had us go through and everything, and putting our characters to the test, basically, to sometimes, you know, improvise on what it is that each character has to go through through the movie basically mm -hmm. and uh, like I said I did more I think just trying to think my way through knowing I had to solve this case you know than out there in the field where mostly everybody was doing most of the action stuff but at the same time you know I was still piecing stuff together you know to help along the process and everything and then eventually I do get out in the field. Okay. So that means you got you had to be that superhero cop. There was one scene that I believe that you were talking to Johnny Vito and you was pretty much telling him in so many words, hey, you ain't seen trouble until you see me, right? right? Tell me about right. that. Exactly. Man. Well basically, um again I got called in um to help with the the investigation of this murder and everything and the one thing about McCain you have to understand is he trusts no one. You know, he basically, even even with John T's character, he's like, I, I know what you're doing, but at the same time, I still have to treat you like a suspect as well. Gotcha. But when it comes to Johnny Vito, he already knew about Johnny Vito and what he was about and everything. So when he had a chance to go and confront Johnny Vito to let him know that if he had anything to do with the murder, he was going to do his best to bring him down and anybody else that was with him. You know, and basically going into that office and everything, I just had the mindset, you know, of just saying, hey, you know, if you're part of this, then you're going down. You know, you think that there was trouble then, you haven't seen nothing yet. And the viewers will see that April 20th when they come and check out the movie. Did you see how passionate this brother was just now? He got into that character. That, that was his character, boy. They, Tom Henry couldn't have picked a better person for us, say Special Agent McCain. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank Man, you, Man, that's off the chain. He was definitely in character. Thank you. Hey, Troy, what's some of these the upcoming things that you're going to be in or things that you're dealing with? Anything that's progressive for you at this point? Well, definitely, um, I am still with Be Wicked Mac, and right now we're growing. Hold on, um, man. Be Wicked Mac. Yes, sir. What's up with Be Wicked Mac? Be Wicked Mac. Let me 
let me just you know speed people up with it and everything. Be Wick and Mac is actually a cross version of Mac and Be Wick, the streets. If you're familiar with the East Side of Detroit, I'm done with the East Side, but, baby. But intellectually, the creator and director, Miss Dakima Matthews, you know, switched the names around and everything and made it her own. And she has this way of having the characters come together. It's set in a family atmosphere, and it's being compared, being compared to greats like Good Times cool. and any Tyler Perry vehicle, except it's set in Detroit. And a, and a lot of people may not know that in the and everything. And there are people that already have the buzz outside of Detroit about this show and everything because it has everything that you want in a show. Like I said, it's got the family setting, but at the same time, all the characters people can identify with, especially in a Detroit way. Sure. You know, and I think that is one of the coolest things about being in anything that has to do with being in Detroit because you actually get to see places that you grew up around or places that you're familiar with and everything, you know, and it shows the talent that has always been here. It just never got the love, really, that a lot of other cities get and everything. But now, believe me, it's coming. I believe God has something very special with, with Be Wick and Mac, Act of Vengeance, and all these other films that have came through. Hollywood came through and kind of showed us how it could be done. But we've always been on the grind since day one. You know, all the independent film actors, actors, actresses, film crew, everybody. You know, they're now starting to finally get some shine in everything, you know. But it's long overdue. And shout out to all of them and everything. You know, people I've worked around on, on every vehicle that I've been on and everything, you know. They finally get some, you know, some just do love because, you know, they deserve that. Well, you know what? That, that's, that's real talk, Troy. That's real talk. And that's one of the reasons why we have Detroit Uncut, the real deal. Because things that we want to do, nobody else is going to touch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, we sir. can be soft. Mm -hmm. We can be hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can be unpredictable. Right. We can be vicious. Right. It's right. all about what the flavor is. Exactly. At the time. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's what Detroit Uncut, the real deal, is all about. And you know what I'm saying? We appreciate that because now there is a show that can depict all the talent, you know, no matter what the field is in this industry, you know, what it's always been about in everything. Exactly. You know, and a show like this has long been overdue and we appreciate it, you know, that it's now coming to the forefront in everything. So people will now understand what people have been trying to do for a long, long time. You know, and a show like this is definitely helping that out. And I appreciate that, brother. Hey, Thank man, you very much. It's our pleasure, brother. You know, we, we wanna do we wanna do what we do and make it do what we do. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's what we all about. All right. What else is going on, Troy? Anything else prior to that? Oh, oh what else yes, you got sir. Going on, yes, man? sir. Well, you know, <laughs> first and foremost, like I said, you know, <clears throat> I, I give all glory to, to God and everything and like I said, my voice through him has been nothing but a blessing, you know, and now that I'm finally going to get a chance to kind of like give back a little bit at least, you know, because I get to do some voiceovers for the church that I currently go to, Family Victory Worship, you okay. know, out in Southfield and everything. I'm going to be doing voiceovers, you know, for them. Well, and wait a minute, like wait a minute Troy. Not to cut you off, brother. Yes. But when there's some commercials in the works for you for voiceovers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There, there's also uh, commercials and everything like that, you know, that I have going on as well and everything. But at the same time, you know, basically, you know, they're, they're here and there and everything. I like to talk about stuff that is more consistent and everything you know I have done commercials you know basically this is my CD this is my voiceover CD where I very first got started it has wow. everything on there that I've done from um, Budweiser to Foot Locker cool. to Suzuki Motorcycle <laughs> to uh, Sell Some Blue Shampoo 
to ESPN College Football. You That's know, it's, 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 it's basically how I got my start. It's basically how people heard about my voice. I've also done things locally that people have known me for. I was um, part of the inception of uh, the very first commercial for Greek Town Casino for the opening. Um, you know the jingle. Let the party begin at Greek Town. You know, that, you know, pretty much launched, you know, how I got other things, you know, involved. I got other roles, you know, in different movies and commercial spots and everything like that. So, you know, again, I, I give the glory to God that, you know, that that all helped, you know, my uh, progression, if you will. Well, I hate to tell you this, brother, but this is mine. It's my, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it is, on to this it, one. It, 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 it is yours. This one it is mine. yours. I, I hate to tell you. It, that. it is yours. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Love, brother. Yes, sir. Well, I tell I you what, my you. man. It has been my pleasure, my yes, brother, sir. to have you on Detroit Uncut the Real Deal. Well, it's been a pleasure being on here, sir, and keep doing what you do. And by the way, <laughs> you did your thing in this movie as well. You definitely did your thing. His name is Kanga. He's Vito's strong arm bodyguard. Cocky, strong. <coughs> he doesn't do much talking. He lets all his actions do the talking for him. You definitely have to watch out for this one. Understand, this guy's not playing. He's no joke. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Detroit Uncut, the real deal, where all gloves are off. Boy, do I tell you, I have a treat for you today. We have actors slash up-and-coming filmmakers in the house today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Jacqueline Strebs and Barbara Troy. How are you ladies doing today? Very well, yeah. thank you. Great. You're doing very well? <laughs> well, you know, I, I found out some information that you ladies have been very busy lately. Yeah. Found out that you're, you're doing an enormous amount of films, that you're actually being picked up on different roles for different sets, how do you keep up with all of that? Take one thing at a time. <laughs> I think <laughs> I de definitely it's a juggling act. I'm, um, but that's I mean that's what it's been ever since I, for for me ever since I, uh, I guess decided you know I wanted to be an actress since I was young. It was just you know um, always always looking for for new work or trying to find the next thing to. Um, to you know, follow to to allow myself to express my creativity. Um, yeah, yeah. And Keeping avenues open. Yeah, and and for both of us, I think it, um, it helps that neither of us have like real full time jobs. So you okay. know, we have a, a, um, our whole lives to really you know uh, spend on this. I I do so many things um, in terms of marketing and and. As, as well as writing and directing and, and all of that, so uh, there's, there's always something to be done, and uh, sometimes it gets done in the middle of the night, but it gets done. Never boring, huh? Uh, hardly ever, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a full-time job, really, but I've had been juggling four jobs at one time and stuff, so it definitely takes work to be able to, um, you know, as an, as an actor and, and working on films, it takes, you know, it takes time to be able to build enough and uh, build up enough work here to get time off and and have jobs that allow flexibility. So it's definitely, you know, it's a juggling act, as I kind of said. It's it's skill in well, itself. What type of projects have you you worked on lately? 
Barbara, you want to start? Um, yeah, um, well, uh, lately we just finished shooting um, back last summer uh, uh, a feature film called Grave Decision in Toledo. Um, you said in Toledo. In Toledo. Grave Ohio. Decisions? Yes. Okay. Um, in a cemetery owned by the city of Toledo. Wow. Um, and um, Jackie um, has a lead role in that. And um, we were in Toledo for almost three weeks, two and a half, three weeks. And um, that uh, is in post. So that, that's our last, pro you know, our most recent project together. Okay. Um, Action, comedy. Kind of thing, uh, drama, gra know. grave robbery, yeah. diamond, <laughs> diamond theft, uh -oh. uh, kind of wild. A lot, a lot of uh, fires and action and car chases and foot chases. And a lot of blowing up and all that. Type oh yeah, of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. We gotta have the blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't lived unless you blown something up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, I, I was trying to remember when when we first started uh, working together. Um, it was in 2009, we did a, a okay. short film, and uh, I was introduced to Jackie through an actress friend, a mutual actress friend of ours. From who I knew from college, and, uh, oh. she called me to an audition. And when when I first saw them wow. t reading together, my my writing, I mean, it was it blew me away. That, that, that was, I think, better than um, seeing any of these movies made. Just actually seeing those characters come to life for the first time, you know. So it was like, that's the person yeah, that I want, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and um, you know, we keep coming back to her because she's really good. It's a lucky break you get every once in a while. I could go to, I've been to so many auditions and never get the part, and you never know why. But, um, you know, sometimes you just connect with the, you know, the people that you audition with and, and you know, you make it, it's, yeah, it's always... Yeah. See, I don't know if, if how it wow. I don't know if you and Morgan actually worked um, on that script before you actually auditioned. Did you? No. You did. No. Not at all. You, I. I mean, I did my own, you know, work yeah. on it, and then you but just go together. there and try to, yeah, try to play off the next person. Oh, so there, there was a, basically a situation where you were just trying to go ahead and caress your lines and understand them, and, and Morgan was trying to do the same thing? Well, Morgan was actually, a, a, at that point, like a co-producer on the film, and um, she was um, involved with the casting at, at okay. that point, um, as was I and some other people. And, um, you know, I mean, Morgan knew enough about Jackie's work to know that, you know, she would really fit into that part and, and so she really did. <laughs> it's good when, when other when actresses or actors help other actors and actresses. I mean really that's that's it's just been building I think in the Detroit community especially of of um, you know filmmakers. I think it really is kind of like a, a snowball effect where, you know, you start working on a project and it's like you know, you you know all these people from school or from working with them at, at different theaters. It's, I mean, I started in the stage and studied stage theater, so that's and uh, only until after college did I really make the transition to, to actually working in film. Um, although I aspired to to work in film and had done some small directing and writing in high school, but um, it wasn't really until I did one one other film before um, before Barb's short. Um, and that was that really kind of sent me off into working in film. I did what I've done now. After that, uh, what, three features with what, you and uh, what three features? Um, for Detroit Winter, which is going to be premiering. Detroit yeah. Winter. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> which is Wait why we're here. This That's the first feature. Yeah. Is an awesome looking presentation of the film. <laughs> it is just awesome. <laughs> Could you guys tell me a little bit about the film? Yeah. It's a. You, you I, I, I think, you, okay, you don't have to, do to give that. all the secrets away. Yeah, I, just that. give me a little bit. Yeah. I think from the beginning, I I came up with a phrase to try to describe it that was um, that it's a romantic comedy of uh, no no a romantic com or, um, it's kind of romantic comedy of epic revenge, isn't that what I mean? Okay. Oh, that nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that there's like a relationship, that, but the <laughs> two characters don't necessarily agree upon this relationship they had in the past. Um, and they've they've broken up, and one character wants the other back, and they they meet 
under certain circumstances of a of a Detroit winter, um, in the midst of a Detroit winter, and um, okay. it kind of you know goes. First step rehab, the number one choice for your rehabilitation needs. We have state-of-the-art equipment for injuries due to auto accidents, spinal care, sports injuries, workman comp. First step rehab's physical therapy program is tailored for each patient and includes strengthening and pain relief, patient education, and a carefully monitored exercise program. First step rehab, the best choice for your rehabilitation needs. Located at 7455 Greenfield, 313-406-9597. We're back. My main man over here to the left. The man of the hour. Director. Producer. Writer. Choreographer. Editor. Martial artist. Psychotherapist. Psychologist. Whatever you want to call him. This is my man, and I present to you, Tom Edward Henry. What's up, Tom? What's happening, man? You all right? Yes, sir. Thomas Edward Henry. Don't you start. Can you really trust somebody with three first names? <laughs> Can you really do that? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, folks. This man here is an up-and-coming film maker. He had one movie, which was called Uncut. He's presently just completed the act of vengeance and this particular movie will be in the theater on April 20th it'll be premiering at the Senate theater famous theater which is located in the city of Detroit and it's also on Michigan Avenue hey Tom yes sir man I bet you it took a long time to get this movie completed yes it did it actually took three years. And, it, and it's funny because it actually took three years for my first film. And uh, I think the first film was the one that was really the headache is because I wanted to try something. I wanted to get a bunch of people that had never acted before, which is what I did. Um, I got 98% of the people that were in my first film were not actors. Mm. They, you know, I had, so I held acting classes and taught them how to act. And then I have, you know, the people that I wanted to be in the action scenes. I, I held what was called a stunt camp and taught them how to fight for the camera, <clears throat> which is what I did for this film. Uh, okay. I held a stunt camp to teach the actors how to actually fight for the camera to make it look believable. So it was, it was a lot of work, and, and uh, I, would, I would have to say my uh, biggest challenge was the first film, and... I also ran into some problems here with the second one because we, you like, to, of course, you're gonna run into your audio problems. But one of the problems, one of the problems that we actually had was uh, when we, and you actually, uh, it was the nunchuck scene. It was, you know, I had to pretend like it was still summertime. It was freezing that day, and 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 it's funny because if the audience actually look at my nose, my, my nose was bloodshot red, <laughs> and, and uh, I was so cold, I was. I had to really play it off, you know. I couldn't hardly move the noon charts the way I really wanted, you know. But I, you know, I, uh, people, some people thought I was actually using them pretty fast, and I, they don't know I could have been even faster if it had been warmer. But it, it was just so cold that day, man. But I had to play it off like it was still summertime, so oh, you it had, worked out. You had the Rudolph effect, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. I would have put Rudolph to shame, man. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna tell you something, Tom. You know, there are certain excerpts of this movie that I mm -hmm. know have been placed on Facebook and that have been placed on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to watch a couple of them. And man, I'm telling you, it, it was just off the chain. Thank you. But it was one, some information that I learned of. Most movies have a budget. Mm -hmm. What was your budget? Zero. 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 Okay, hold, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. I'm quite sure everybody out there in the viewing audience, you're blowing things up, taking up people's time, all these different locations that you're dealing with. You had to spend some time. How did you get the people to do their time? How did you get the locations? 
how, how did you do any of this mm -hmm. if you had no money? It, it was a matter of getting people to see my vision, especially people that had the locations. I had to go talk with them and uh, get them on board. First of all, I had to get them to see my vision. Hmm. Um, and once they seen the vision and seen how I wanted to actually go with this film, because even though I didn't have a budget, I didn't shoot it as if I had a budget. I shot it as if I had a multi-million dollar budget. And that was, the, that was the, the way I seen things. I didn't look at it as not having a budget, even though I didn't have one. Uh, when the, once the audience see this film, they're, they're, they're going to think right off that I did have a big budget. Um, and the people that I actually talked with actually see my vision and, was, and they all came on board, including the actors, you know, the actors, the, of course the actors will put this on their resume, you know, but they believed in what I was doing. And I think that's what really helped out a lot. Okay. Uh, then you have a, a radio show interview at one time. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it was pretty interesting because they, they, they wanted to know the same thing. How did I actually pull that off? And when I told them there was no budget involved, they, they, they really didn't believe it. You know, so I had to explain to them how I, you know, how I had to actually go through that to be able to pull that off. And it, like I say, once again, it was a matter of getting the people to see my vision. And that's basically what it was all about. And then, of course, you got to know about uh, all, all of the background. You got to know about filming. And, and uh, special effects and everything because, uh, you know, I, like there's a lot of people that actually gets, think that you can just say, I'm going to shoot a film. And they think it's just, just because you want to do a film, you think you can just pick up a camera and, and start shooting. They don't realize there's a lot involved. There is a lot involved. And, and if you don't know, if you don't know everything, because my background goes way back to the 70s. Wow. I started back in the 70s practicing with what's called a Super 8 camera where you only had 50 feet of film with no sound. So basically we, was, we had to add the sound in like the old Chinese movies. Oh, you know? okay. And, and uh, so it was practicing with that where you couldn't really make no mistake. Wasn't no room, wasn't no room for error. Mm -hmm. So we had to really be on our P's and Q's and be almost perfect. So I would gather up a lot of guys and we would get in my backyard and practice every day and just go over the scenes over and over and over again. You know, and took it from there. Okay. Yeah. Now, the next thing that I want to ask you, because I, I just got to notice, they told me that there were stunt camps involved. Are you still conducting stunt camps? Yes, I am. Time? Yes, I am. And as a matter of fact, I got one coming up this year. Um, we're supposed to be doing it sometime in July where we're going to actually be doing, have holding stunt camps to teach people how to fight for the camera and also weapons, teaching them how to use uh, firearm weapons. And uh, the stunt camp is uh, $100 per person, but it's going to be six hours long. Okay. So, it, so it, you know, I'll have more information about that. But we're actually doing it uh, this year. Actually, we're supposed to have two this year. But I always hold a stunt camp when every movie I do, I have a stunt camp to teach the people how to fight for the camera. Now, you know what? I have a, a picture here of Tom uh, back in the day, and Tom looked like Bruce Lee. <laughs> so, as you can see, the picture that just came up, you see how Tom is, see how he chiseled and all of that, and uh, just wanted to know that Tom has a very auspicious uh, martial arts background. You know, Tom, you've done a lot of great things, man. I know you are doing a lot of things in conjunction with the Detroit Boxing Jungle. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, you're also dealing with promotions of boxing venues, uh, boy tie events, all those different types of things. I even heard that you do weddings mm -hmm. and you do different type of photography. Tell me about that. Yeah, I actually shoot, uh, <clears throat> I actually shoot weddings. Um, you know, when people, people call me and ask me to do their wedding events for them. Basically, I shoot the weddings for them. I edit them and, and um, add a little sound effects and add the music. I put some real nice music to the uh, wedding, and I think they really, really love that the most about me, which is why I get a lot of calls for the weddings, but uh, weddings and, and uh, other special events that people want me to do. We also do sporting events as well. So it keeps me going. Well, uh, one, another thing I'm going to say now, this man talking about, he used a Super 8 camera 
back in the 70s. Hmm. And this is 2013. I want to be like that. Instead <laughs> of me wanting to be like Mike, I want to be like Tom. <laughs> well, Tom, is there anything else that's, that's up and coming, anything in the future that the viewers need to know about? Yes, we, we, uh, we, we got a few more action films that we're actually going to be doing. And of course, uh, you know about Active Vengeance uh, premiere that's going to be uh, April the 20th at the uh, Senate Theater. And of course, of course, we have other things in the work. And, uh, you know, whatever, we got some kind of event that's going to be coming. Of course, you know, I'll come on the show and talk about it. You know, if you'll have me, I'll be very happy oh, to come on the show and talk about it. Most definitely. Okay. Talk to me about website. Talk mm -hmm. to me about your contact information. Please look right there to my viewers and give them the information. Mm -hmm. My website address is www.dragonpitcher.net. And you can uh, reach me, uh, you can also reach me on Facebook under Dragon Films. And you can also reach me under on my email address at tom4k4 at yahoo.com. You're the main man, Tom. Thank you, sir. Appreciate having you on, my brother. Thank you, sir. This is Rico L. from Detroit Uncut, The Real Deal. We'll be right back. All right. My name is John T., ex-CIA agent. I retired several years ago, and I made a promise to the government to put my past behind me. Now I've been forced out of retirement to seek out the people that killed my son. Big mistake. I promise you, I will find them and I will be the worst nightmare that they've ever had. We will fix this problem now. Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's your host Rico L. We're back with Detroit Uncut. And I'm just going to tell you, I have a man here for you today. This man is a boxing trainer, he's a martial artist, He's an actor. What can I say? What hasn't he done? What's up, my man? I give you oh some God. Ira Kendrick. What's up, Ira? Well, how you doing? Everything good, man? Everything's fine. Hey, brother, I heard about you. You just all over the place. You in this movie called Act of Vengeance? Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about that, bro. Uh, well, uh, my character name is Becker. Uh, Becker, he's the head henchman of, uh, of uh, Johnny Vito. He's a bad guy. He's a guy, uh, he's, you know, serious. You know, char well, the character is real serious. And he's the one to give out the orders. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, that's cool. Now, let me ask you this, man. How did the character go with your persona? You, the person that you are. Was that character kind of like you? Or was that character opposite of you? What was the character and you like? Well, you know, I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, I just, I, I think it's easy for me to play the bad guy. It's okay. just, yeah, it's easy, you know, you can... I mean, it's, it's easy for me to look mean, you know, look mean okay. and tough. So that's why, uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, took to that role. Okay. Uh -huh. Has there any, any other acting parts that you had, any other movies, or anything up and coming that we need to know about? Um, no, not at this time, you know, unless, uh, you know, Dragon Film, you know, come up with another movie. Well, you know what, I'm quite sure Dragon Film will probably come up with another one. <laughs> I'm quite sure of that. Uh, and hey, man, you know, I know that you're a boxing trainer. Where, where do you train at? Well, uh, I train fighters at the Detroit Boxing General. Oh, okay. Uh, where, where is that located? Uh, that's located on Greenfield. I think it's 7455 Greenfield. That's between Tyron and Warren. Okay, is that the uh, Mawada Cats over there? Yeah, yeah. The Mawada yeah. Brothers? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Let's uh, move, let's move. Yeah. 
All right, and also martial arts. I know you deal with martial arts. How many uh, gyms do you deal with, and, and how long have you been in the martial arts? Uh, well, I started in the martial arts uh, back in nineteen back in nineteen seventy three. Tell me your age, Turns huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I used to. I was a karate instructor one time. But, okay. Uh, you know, now I just you know just train fighters. No. Oh, okay. Uh, well, who was who was a person that was your point of reference uh, as far as martial arts is concerned? Who do who do you look up to? Who was a person that you mostly emulate? Um, you know, there's a lot of guys in Detroit, you know, that have been around for a long time, and you know, one of the guys that I look up to is uh, you know Richard Plowden. Uh, you know, he's been around, and guys like uh, Curtis Butler, uh, I believe it's Willie Adams, Ishiro. Okay. Uh, yeah, those guys, they you know, they more like. You know, pioneers in the oh, martial arts. Detroit. You ever heard of a uh, cat named uh, Delford Ford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, about Delford, Delford? Yeah, Delford. Yeah, uh, Delford, yeah. he's one of them. Yeah. Yellow uh, Tigers kind oh, of yeah, guy. Yellow, ti <laughs> yellow Tiger. <laughs> yellow Tigers kind of uh, guy. Delford's my man. Yeah, I've yeah. known Delford for a very long time. Uh huh. Hey, man, what else has been going on with you? You know? Well, uh, you know, just uh, looking for other, you know, opportunities, you know. Um, you know, been going online, see, you know, seeing if there's any other acting, uh, you know, jobs. Okay. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully, uh, you know, Dragon Film, you know, they come up with another, you know, movie and I can, you know, be a part of that movie. Oh, okay. Uh, and I, you know what, I really thank, uh, you know, Tom Henry for the opportunity of, uh, you know, being in this movie. And, I, you okay. know, I had a lot of, you know, a lot of fun. Okay. A lot of fun. That's what's up. That's what it's uh, all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. But brother, I know you're a busy man, man. I know you got a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire, but uh, I'm going to tell you, man, we we glad that you graced us today. We appreciate you stopping by, my man. Okay. And hey, appreciate everything, and uh, hey, hope everything goes well with you in the future. Okay. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Detroit Uncut, the real deal. And we would like to showcase anybody else. And if you're interested in coming on the show, we're interested in getting any information for the show, we want you to go to dragonpicture.net. And if you need to go to any other information, you go to tom4k4 at yahoo.com or ricoel at yahoo.com.